Kos, green pearl of the Aegean, an historic oasis beneath the Greek sun. Not the largest of the Dodecanissa Islands, but certainly one of its most fascinating, with endless sandy beaches and an ancient heritage. The capital of the island is Korakos. Almost half the island's inhabitants live here, close to the lively and historic Mandraki Harbour. For 2,000 years, this has been the nerve center of the island, even in antiquity. This harbor was the lifeblood of the city's trade. Today, it's also the starting point for a variety of popular boat trips. The history of this ancient settlement began in 14 BC, when the island's capital was founded here. It has a well-protected natural harbor and is close to the Asian continent. Now a busy holiday destination, in bygone times, it was a health resort and was also frequented by pilgrims. The city once suffered devastating earthquakes and the island was plagued by numerous invaders. The Romans, Byzantines, Venetians, the Knights of St. John and finally the Turks. A modern collection of sculptures points to the island's most famous son, Hippocrates whose greatest legacy is the Hippocratic Oath of today. Tourists crowd into the harbour area during the busy holiday season. Ferries travel to the various islands and there are boats for local traffic and for trips to remote beaches. Each week, hundreds of thousands of holidaymakers arrive on the island that has a population of 25,000 and a fabulous range of hotels. The Crusader Castle of Narazia covers almost half the peninsula and even today protects Mandraki Harbour. Following their arrival from Jerusalem in the 14th century, the Order of the Knights of Malta built this huge fortified complex. been a fortress here since Byzantine times. Today's fortress was created in two stages. The Knights of St. John first constructed an inner castle. Due to increasing threat of invasion by the Osmanic Empire, they reinforced the outer walls with pinnacles. But 
Following their defeat on the neighboring island of Rhodes, the fortress was handed over to the Turks in 1523. With this, the glorious days of the Crusades came to an end. Today, the interior of the fortress is like an overgrown museum. Everywhere, there are remnants of ancient columns between medieval walls. The romantic ruins on Kos Harbour, the bulwark of the Knights of St. John, dominates the city. Nearby is the Plat de Platinu. In the center of the square is an ancient tree planted by Hippocrates. It was here that the famous doctor taught his students and where Paul the Apostle is said to have taught Christianity beneath the shady branches of this huge tree. Tourists relax next to a small Turkish well, and the minaret of the Islamic Haji Hassan Mosque rises above the square. Next to the mosque are the ancient ruins of Agora, that was first discovered after an earthquake in 1933. From across the ancient ruins, there are church towers and minarets, an intriguing harmony of styles. The Platia Eleftherius is the main square of today's Kos. The spacious square is surrounded by numerous buildings and a museum. The archaeological museum is located in a futuristic looking Italian building that dates back to the 1930s. It features sculptures and also floor and wall mosaics. There are stone busts and statues of the Roman and Hellenistic eras that provide a good insight into the imaginative culture of a golden age. The island's cafes are a good place to relax and also absorb the island's history. In the square, a number of steps lead up to the city's cathedral, the Agia Paraskevi. It's not a large cathedral, but extremely modern and well located in the center of the town. Its interior is adorned with wall paintings in traditional Greek style. As is customary in Greece, local families donated money for this magnificent display.
Here, there's a small train that takes visitors to various sites. And in an overgrown area are some ancient ruins, the altar of the Dionysus. It takes more than a little imagination to recognize these stones as having been part of a Hellenistic sanctuary for the god Dionysus. In 1934, Italian archaeologists discovered the Casa Romana amid the ruins of the central thermal baths, of which only part of the floor has survived. This rebuilt villa dates back to the 3rd century and indicates how the Romans lived in ancient Kos. The walls have since been reinforced and roofs have been added to the Roman dwellings. Three yards with small wells are encircled by two-story arcades. Below are Corinthian columns and above Ionic columns. The existence of latrines surprises most visitors and indicates the high standard of living of this period. The scientific value of such reconstruction work is not without controversy, but those who come here are delighted to see such sites in addition to the ancient ruins. Master builders of old were highly skilled. The acoustics in the Odeon, a small Roman music theatre, are truly remarkable. Opposite is a large excavation site that contains impressive remains that date back 500 years. These include a number of well-preserved floor mosaics of the Nymphaeon. And in the lower section, a group of reconstructed columns. These Doric columns originally consisted of 81 and formed an atrium. archaeology here is unique. A Hellenic sports area, Roman baths, all covered by an early Christian basilica. As a city, Kos has succeeded in blending together the remains of antiquity with contemporary times, without destroying the archaeological history of three millennia. Close to the historic sites of the city are its wonderful sandy beaches, a dreamland of sun and sea. Outside the city is the simple rural life of Greece, with herds of goats and hard-working farmers. Only 
only four kilometers from the city, high in the Dikios Mountains, is one of the island's most important sites, the Asclepion, an ancient hospital and sanctuary. The magic atmosphere of the terraced stone scenery is an indication of the historical and cultural significance of this area. It was here that the Greeks worshipped the god of medicine, who was later named Asculap by the Romans. This was a place of both healing and ritual sacrifice. A mighty earthquake destroyed the complex and much of what remained was used to build the harbour's castle and for various dwellings and mosques in Kos. Traveling west of the city is a real journey of discovery. It leads to a tranquil area far from the tourist trail. Picturesque rocky bays, a mild climate, lots of fresh air and a crystal blue sea. Winding road leads to the village of Kefalos that has 2,300 inhabitants and from below looks like a small fortified complex. Its white houses and narrow alleys are free of traffic and it's as though time has stood still. Formerly a village of fishermen, agriculture is now the main source of income for the local people. Kefalos has much historical significance as it was built on the ruins of the first capital of the island. And Hippocrates was born here in 460 BC. The protected bay of Kefalos has endless sandy beaches and also rocky areas, a paradise for all. On the coast are the remains of the small early Christian basilica of Asio Stephanos. It's very well preserved and set in a beautiful location. Italian archaeologists rebuilt many of its granite columns, although many have since collapsed. But several of its walls are in good condition. The west of the island is a haven of tranquility. The scenery is natural and unspoilt. Antimachia Castle was built in the 13th century by the Venetians and later expanded by the Knights of St. John. Its mighty external walls are most impressive. Thank you.
The interior of the castle has become overgrown by nature. Only a few cisterns and two small chapels remain. In times of danger, many farmers from the surrounding area have sought shelter here. Masticari is located on the island's northern coast. The small harbour has a colourful array of fishing boats and yachts. Its 200 inhabitants are wary of tourism. Fishermen check their nets and prepare for their nightly catch. The local inhabitants exist mainly from agriculture and fishing. are the island's northern sandy beaches. Magnificent and natural, ideal for sunbathing and swimming. And there's a good assortment of colorful sunbeds. There are lots of cafes and restaurants and Greek hospitality is the order of the day. The road travels inland across green hills to the island's only mountain, Dikios. The terrain suddenly becomes rockier and the pace slower. At the roadside, blossoming cacti highlight the sun-scorched arid terrain of the mountain slopes. Asfandiu Church belongs to Lagudi, one of five small mountain villages that have amalgamated for administrative reasons. The remarkable paintings on the walls and ceiling of Our Lady's Church are quite recent and show the Holy Virgin Mary with baby Jesus. Splendid icons displayed on posts and hanging on walls emphasize the Byzantine style of this remote picture book church. There's a view of the former salt mines of Tigaki, where during the last century, around 20,000 hundredweight of salt was mined. Today, many water and wading birds rest here during the winter months. Zaya is the island's perfect mountain village. In the past, the abundance of water in this area brought the village much prosperity. But now, its inhabitants profit from tourism. From the village square, the road leads along a mountain ridge flanked by several souvenir shops and taverns that await the next tourists. The villagers offer herbs and honey for sale and also popular Greek souvenirs. There's a spectacular view down to the sea, particularly at sunset. Fascinating landscapes and the historic monuments of many epochs make the Greek island of Kos a jewel of the Aegean.